Hey you all, and good morning. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the west, more specifically, Salina, Utah. We are in front of these giant soda cans. There is Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite, and Monster Energy. I don't think I've ever, I don't think in my life I've ever actually drank Monster Energy. I, I used to work third shift at a hotel and I would drink energy drinks. I would used to drink the Mountain Dew Amp energy drinks and um, I, they, would, they would upset my stomach. I would get massive heartburn, so I stopped drinking energy drinks. So I don't think I've ever had Monster. I know a lot of people love the Monster energy drink. What is in these? Are these actually soda in these giant cans? We're at, here at this gas station. So maybe, maybe, maybe they're full of gas. But anyways, we're getting ready to head eastward, trying to uh, get home within a, uh, within a reasonable amount of time, trying to get home before WrestleMania. I wanna be able to get home and watch WrestleMania with, uh, with Jen. So uh, we're gonna head east. We are gonna try to find some interesting stuff along the way, maybe take a few detours. So uh, please, follow me. Stopped off here in Emory, Utah, where we we're actually in the median of the highway because of this. There is a shoe tree here in the median of the highway. Now, shoe trees are a rare yet amazing phenomenon. It is when a tree begins accumulating shoes mysteriously. Now, often you maybe starts when one person takes their shoes and throws it on a tree. Another person sees that someone has done that and, and adds their shoes to the tree. And I've always been fascinated with these. They're, they're, they're scattered about, scattered about the country. In fact, if you know of a shoe tree, leave a comment in the comment section. Maybe I can find some more shoe trees to check out. But um, I hate passing up a shoe tree without leaving my shoes on that tree. And I like, I like to see it in a way as each, each one of these shoes represents an adventure or a path or a, a portion of someone's life that was spent in these shoes. And they rest here together. All these different adventures hanging in this tree, sharing a space. So I want to add my shoes to this tree, to these other adventures up here. Of course, these shoes I'm wearing now I've been wearing for quite a few weeks, and if you've been following this channel, you know it has been a very eventful uh, few weeks, uh, to traveling out to the West Coast, all the road bumps I've hit, all the challenges I've, uh, I've been through, and all the amazing things I've done and seen. Uh, just, just go back, over the past, just going back over the past videos of what I've done, what I've seen, the problems, the highs, the lows, the joyous times, the slightly troubling times was all done in these shoes. So I figured I'd, I'd give them a retirement and hang them up here on, uh, on the shoe tree. You can see my weathered red Crocs there. The, uh, the tread on the bottom is almost gone. They're caked in filth and muck. So I think it is definite time for these to join a shoe tree. Now looking for a spot on the tree here on which to hang my Crocs. See all the different shoes up there overlooking uh, overlooking the highway here. It's a little bit of a hill to climb up here, so there we go. We'll see if we can find a good spot where we can uh, add these Crocs where uh, hopefully they will be here for a very long time. Yeah, and again, we are in the middle we're in the middle of the median of the highway. This branch 
down here looks like a good place to uh, to add the Crocs. We can see if we can slide them onto uh, onto the branch here. There we go. Pass those nubs and then uh, slide them along. And there they are joining joining these other shoes. Another adventure settled and retired here on the shoe tree. And again, I'm curious, I do like to retire my shoes on shoe trees. If you do know of a shoe tree, leave a comment in the comment section. I'd love to come see your local shoe tree. All right, we have switched to a pair of green Crocs. I am uh, looking forward to all the adventures that I'll be having while wearing this, uh, this particular pair. And one day, I will put these on a shoe tree. And uh, when I do, I'll, I'll reminisce about, about all the adventures that I had in, uh, in the meantime. And we have stopped here in Moab, Utah. More specifically, we are at the Moab Giants Dinosaur Park. So, never been to this area before. I've heard a lot of good things about the Moab area. So I figured I'd check some things out here in this area. And we're gonna start with Moab Giants. All right, looks like we enter through this entrance. Now, Moab Giants includes a dinosaur park as well as a museum and there is a little bit of rain coming down right now so i think we will check out the museum first oh look at that there's a uh, dinosaur foot bursting through the ceiling the stomping dinosaur foot well, i guess he's going to stomp all the way down here where we can see a dinosaur track in the ground. So we enter the museum here. It says, lift it. I don't, I'm afraid. Is there gonna be like a dinosaur jump scare here? Oh, there. We got a little dinosaur footprint. Now the focus of this museum is dinosaur footprints. So you can see the uh, footprint there. That's a dromedopodus foot. It shows what the foot looks like and what footprint it would leave behind. There's a stegopodus foot and the footprint that that would leave behind. And this display here shows the uh, evolution of fish coming onto the land. It says as the uh, sea dried up, the uh, fish adapted limbs and begin to crawl onto land. See the different creatures there in the swamps as they evolve to get longer limbs, more foot-like fins in order to crawl out of the water. And then over here, you have the coelocanth, which is a fish that still exists and actually has those leg-like lobes still on its body. It's actually thought to be extinct for, for quite a while until they actually caught one. And there is a pterosaur skeleton and it shows how they make uh, footprints there on the ground. I remember, you know, when I was younger and they had some less accurate views of what uh, dinosaurs behaved like. I remember they always portrayed the pterodactyl as standing on its hind legs but uh, they actually, when they weren't flying, would walk on all fours like this. Here is the Coleophysidea there. Of course, the way dinosaurs are portrayed now is very different from how they were portrayed when, uh, when I was a kid. And see the feathers on the dinosaur there. It's a Demetrodon, a lot of times, People consider this to be a dinosaur, but it's actually uh, 
uh, more of a uh, in-between phase of reptiles and mammals. We have a touch screen here. Who's that guy? Who's that little character? Is that their mascot? He's got like just like a little smiley face with with dinosaur feet. It says touch the screen here, and uh, they have a hybrid Demetrodon. What the heck? This room in here is a replica of what a scientist's office would have looked like in the 1900s. You can see they have their writing desk there, all those books. A lot of focus on physical objects here. See they have the framed dinosaur footprints. Oh, look at that, there's a human skull next to that footprint. And then I guess a, a leg bone there. And lots and lots of taxidermy. You can see the mountain lion. There's a giant goose up there on top. See the giant leg bone there as it smashes through the ground. Leaves that big footprint. You can see the dinosaurs here being swallowed into this pit of mud. I almost got swallowed into a pit of mud today nearby the uh, shoe tree. Now this is pretty amazing. This is a replica of one of the most famous dinosaur uh, footprint patterns of all time. This is in Glen Rio, Texas. I've actually been here and it, it's pretty remarkable. This is, uh, when I went this was actually filled up as a river but sometimes it does dry out and you can see the footprints really well. I could see the footprints but they were underwater. But one of the reasons this uh, this uh, set of footprints is so amazing is that it tells a complete story. There was a, a grouping of sauropods, four-legged dinosaurs, and you see the branch off here. There is a, a two sauropod footprints moving that way. And however, one of the sauropods breaks off from the herd and you can actually see a predator's footprints, a predatory dinosaur moving along next to it. So what happened was the three sauropods were together, a predator attacked, chased one of them away from the herd, and you can see him literally stalking and attacking the sauropod as we move along the riverbed. You can kind of see from these diagrams how it occurred. The one dinosaur gets broken off from the herd, followed by the predator. He's literally nipping at his heels as he runs along the riverbed. Here are the two footprints, the sauropod foot, footprint there, the brontopodus, and uh, the irenosauropus, the predator dinosaur. And yeah, you can go there. You can go to Glen Rio and you can see these footprints in the ground. In this room, we have some of the tracks found here on the Moab Giants land that is a uh, a stegosaurus hind footprint there this is a large allosaurus track yeah this uh this mascot here is one of the strangest little characters i've ever seen you can see he's it's like like a little smiley face kind of he's got like little feathery hairs on his head and he's got like like bird feet or dinosaur feet it's so so unusual but uh just touch the screen so okay okay there you go i guess this is different locations where you can find uh dinosaur footprints in uh, the surrounding areas and now it's time to head out onto the dinosaur trail and if you have any small children with you, you can actually pull them in these dinosaur egg shaped wagons. And this rock here actually contains some dinosaur uh, tracks. That is a Allosaurus track, and they think that is a possible Stegosaurus track right there. With this photo op here, you can experience the simple joy of being eaten by a Tyrannosaurus. Oh, no. 
See, popping out of this egg, we have this giant bird-headed dinosaur. I don't even know how he got his massive head out of that little hole in the egg. See this broken down old Jeep over here. It looks almost like we have some sort of campsite. These tents set up here. Yeah, let's take a look. Looks like the Jeep may be having some engine problems with their hood up. But uh, look at these tents. Oh, it's a little, little campsite set up. It's like a little paleontologist uh, campsite in here. Look at this. You even got the sleeping bed and sleeping bag and the bed. I lay down in that bed, but it looks a little dirty and wet. Oh, and look at this. This Triceratops is inviting us to climb aboard its back. This is actually really cool. You can see how the dinosaurs are kind of integrated into the natural environment here. I really like how they do that. And uh, because there is a focus on, uh, on dinosaur tracks here, they do show us the tracks of the dinosaurs we're looking at. These are Composauruses. They call them Compies in Jurassic Park. Here are the Silosauruses, these little tiny dinos. Oh, you can see one back there standing up like a, like a meerkat. Here we have the Isanosaur. It says he was an early sauropod. But I really love the little tuft on top of his head. Very cute. This is the Scute Losaurus. And even though he looks like a Velociraptor or something like that, he's actually a herbivore. Yeah, there's a lot here that I have not uh, heard of before that I'm not familiar with. This is a Gogiosaurus here. Some Sclitosauruses here. You can see all the little prickles he has on him. You can see a couple of Dilophosauruses actually fighting each other right there. And yeah, this, this is a really beautiful dinosaur park. The dinosaurs look great and the environment is amazing just looking at them in front of that uh, that mountain there. Yeah, the rain is still coming down a little bit. Rainy day at the dinosaur park. Here's the Platyosaurus. You can see him munching, munching on that tree there. I know now they're saying that dinosaurs are descended from birds. And this is, I mean, he just straight up looks like a turkey. Look at him, he's even got like, he's even got like a little waddle. Yeah, the, 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 the ferocious dinosaurs of my childhood are now giant turkeys. You can see the large dinosaurs down there. Again, what a beautiful, what a beautiful place for a dinosaur park. Yeah, we have the Diplodocuses here. Like Dippy, the Diplodocus from the, uh, Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh. It's the baby Diplodocus right there. We have the much larger adult Diplodocus. Now this is Hesperosaurus. This is another one I've never heard of and this is fascinating to me. This is a relative of the Stegosaurus. The main difference though is the Hesperosaurus actually walks on two legs. You can see him uh, they're standing on his back legs and uh, walking along there. Very interesting. You always think of the Stegosaurus as big, plodding, four-legged dinosaur, but there's one of his relatives running around on two legs. And look how happy these Ankylosauruses look. Oh, there it is, the legendary Allosaurus. Because you can be my bodyguard and I can be your long lost pal. I can call you Betty, and Betty, you can call me Allosaurus. 
the Gallimimus here. Well, that other dinosaur looked just like a turkey. These look like some sort of ostriches from the pits of hell. And we are in Utah, and Utah loves dinosaurs, but the dinosaur that Utah loves the most is the Utah Raptor. Now, the Utah Raptor is pretty much uh, what was the portrayed as the Velociraptor in Jurassic Park. Velociraptors are actually much smaller, and uh, the, the Utah Raptor is much more close to what was shown in Jurassic Park. But actually, as you can see, neither were all that accurate because in reality, they were covered in fluffy feathers. But uh, I don't think that makes them any less vicious. I can't imagine any dinosaur I would like to be around less than the Utah Raptor. And lurking here behind these bushes is the Acrocanthosaurus. Got this pack of iguanodons all looking in the same direction. Because they got this tiny little sneaky Dionychus sneaking up from the bushes. Oh yeah, you can see that iguanodon jump, trying to jump away from the nut Dionychus there. Now I mentioned earlier what uh, they called the Velociraptor in Jurassic Park is actually a Utah Raptor because this here is the Velociraptor, only about two feet tall, very small, still probably pretty scary, but uh, you can clearly see that the Utah Raptor more closely resembles the Velociraptors in Jurassic Park. I don't know if, if they must have just thought the name Velociraptor sounded cooler, but the Utah Raptor itself was scarier, so maybe they kind of merged the two. And we see these pterodons here, that one in the back flying over the bush. And I can see this one in the foreground walking on all fours like, like we saw the skeleton in the museum. That uh, they didn't walk on two feet, they actually walked on all fours if they weren't uh, flying. Now in here we have the Ovaraptor. And uh, what it was saying on the sign over there was that Ovaraptor means egg thief. And the paleontologist that found it found this uh, dinosaur near some eggs and assumed that they were there to steal the eggs but later it was revealed that those were their own eggs and they weren't trying to steal them they were just trying to take care of them and so they have been labeled <laughs> eternally as the egg thief even though they, they were the, they were there was their own eggs they they were totally framed these are alberta sauruses here it's like they're uh just hanging out, relaxing. They look like scary dinosaurs, but looks like they're taking a little downtime. And when you end your dinosaur trail, you want to end strong. And when you're speaking of dinosaurs, there's only one way to end strong, and that's with Mr. Tyrannosaurus Rex himself. You can see, actually, he does have a little fuzzy coat of feathers, but you know, with him, it doesn't really make him any less terrifying. It looks like here we exit through the gift shop. I was hoping they would sell replicas of their weird little mascot in the gift shop, but I don't see him anywhere. They do have some snow globes here. And there's a snow globe of a shark with a shark inside that's that's uh that's interesting now here is something i've been wanting to check out for quite some time and that is the hole in the rock. Of course, there's a massive rock formation here, but uh, there's actually a home inside of the rock. Someone actually carved a house inside of the rock there. Hence the name, Hole in the Rock. Now, originally, this was a diner. People would uh, 
tourists would come and eat at a diner that was carved completely into the side of the mountain here. And uh, the owners of the diner, Albert and Gladys Christensen, would actually make their home in the rock, carving back in to the rock using dynamite and hand tools and carve themselves out their own little home in the rock. Now here is the front of the home. You can see the windows and front door there just coming right out of the rock wall. I guess this is the back door over here. And you can see carved into the rock face is the face of Franklin D. Roosevelt carved into the rock. Now they do have a gift shop here and they give 12 minute tours of the home inside. Unfortunately, they're very strict about no photos, no videos on the tour. So I'll have to see you on the other side. And I so deeply, so deeply wish that I could take you guys in there with me because it is absolutely amazing. Um, of course, it's easy for me to get grumpy about not being able to film, but that is a real, it's a truly amazing roadside attraction right there. So uh, yeah, apparently at first it was a diner and um, they take you in, the, the, the gift shop area is actually carved, you know, it was again, my dynamite and hand tools was carved in. That was originally a dining room for the diner. They, they, they take you into the kitchen. The kitchen is amazing, it's really cool because it's, it's, it's carved into a rock. The rock is painted like a kitchen, but then there's like custom kitchen items, like like, like cabinets and, and things like that, just built into the into the wall. And it's actually like customized to fit along the rock. The um, the deep fryer is actually carved into the rock. There's a rock deep fryer, which is uh, is amazing. And uh, so. Yeah, they, they, they did close down the diner at some point, and the uh, the man that carved it, Albert, died in the 1950s, but his wife Gladys lived there until the 70s, where she would actually um, sell rocks and uh, minerals, and uh, she would give tours of her home. She would invite people to come in to the home, and she would sell tours, uh, which they're still doing today, still doing the same tours today, and it's, it's amazing. It's a big open floor, floor plan, but it's definitely a cave. Um, all the furniture, the 1970s era furniture, 1950s, 1970s era furniture is uh, is all in there. You've got like a doll collection where Gladys had her uh, doll, her dolls. And uh, Albert was a, he was a painter and a taxidermist. So he has his art studio in there. And there's, the taxidermy is very, very, uh, very interesting. There's his uh, his mule, his prized mule. He taxidermy, but apparently he was a self-taught taxidermist. So it's a uh, very interesting looking uh, mule that you that, that they have in there. It, it, it's got, look at some stitches on his face, maybe like a Franken mule, if you will. Uh, also, there are two taxidermied horses in the living room, but the horses apparently were horses that Albert found dead. There was a mother horse who had broken her leg. There was a, uh, and the baby had died. The baby horse had died next to the mother because they had no one to take care of it. So they, uh, he found them, they're, they're curled up. They're in like the death position and he taxidermied them exactly how we found them. So they're like curled up in the death position, but they're like propped up like like they're standing up but in the death position with like their tongues hanging out. It's some of the most interesting taxidermy I'd ever seen. So like I said as much as much as I would love to take you guys in there, I cannot because they did not allow filming. I will respect their rules of course. But uh, I, I definitely have to recommend checking this out for yourself because um, it is it is an amazing thing to see. Definitely an amazing thing that is 100% worth the stop. And the tours are only like $6 or so, so it's uh, inexpensive, but uh, very, very, very amazing tour. It's a little garden 
back here carved into the rock. You can see all the cactuses and uh, boy angel. I don't know. Oh, okay. This is the graves of the uh, couple that lived here. Glad Gladys and uh, and Albert. Oh yeah, they're buried here in a hole in the rock. If you look really close over there, you can see the actual chimney coming out of the rock that connects to the fireplace in the living room, in the hole, in the rock. And look at this over here. This is a giant cactus made out of bowling balls. A little closer here and show the bowling balls there. A giant towering cactus of bowling balls. This Jeep is made out of license plates. In fact, this is not really a Jeep. It is a, a sculpture of a Jeep. You can see the tires there are different tools and uh, metal bits. So pretty fascinating uh, Jeep there. Well, back in here, it says they have a, uh, a petting zoo here at Hole in the Rock. You can see a tiki bobblehead there. He's actually got a spring on his head with a surfboard here. But uh, here's the entrance to the zoo. I went inside and got a zoo token. It was 425. Oh, I guess we can pass through here now. For an extra five dollars, purchased a bucket of food. There's some carrots and apples, and then grain. And there they said the camel can only have fruits and vegetables. So there is there is a camel lurking about somewhere in here. So we'll be be careful. Oh, there's a it's a barking dog. Here. Hey, buddy. Oh, he doesn't like me. Oh my gosh! Look at the. Uh, the steer there. Look at the size of that. Okay, that's a Watusi cattle. Man, look at those. Look at those horns. This deer here wants. Want a carrot? You like carrots? No? Okay. That's fine. It's fine if you don't like them. Alright, I think the deer here wants me to pour some, some of this animal chow into this tube. There you go, buddy. Filled up his little bowl there. I guess he does. He's not interested in carrots. He just likes the, the grain and chow. Behind the iron curtain. Oh my gosh. It is a, a, a curtain of irons. For a moment, I felt like I was in uh, Hillbilly Gardens in Calvert City, Kentucky. Keith, Keith Holt needs to I think he needs to steal this one. The iron curtain. There's some donkeys here. Donkey like carrots? Yeah, donkeys like carrots. Any carrot there, Mr. Mr. Donkey. Oh no, this donkey's trying to trying to escape. See him pulling on that rope. He's trying to figure trying to figure his way out of there. Oh no, he's trying to bite through the fence. Here, don't bite a fence. Bite a carrot. See these billy goats here. Like carrots. Hey, buddy. Here's Cooper, the camel, born in 2019. He only eats carrots. So, Cooper, Cooper the camel, are you interested in a few, a few carrots here? Or it looks like he may just be satisfied with his, uh, with his hay. There's that angry dog, right there. <laughs> But uh, I've had bad experiences with camel, with co camels, with Cooper. Here, Cooper, you want some carrots? I don't know. He seems like he's pretty satisfied with that uh, that hay that he's munching on. Big hill of rocks there, with a boot on it, and then the sign, of course, says Boot Boot Hill. Now Cooper didn't want a carrot, but it looks like this 
llama here, although we need to be careful, this is a, apparently a spitting zone. Don't spit on me, bro, I, I'll give you a carrot. Is a deal? I give you a carrot and you don't spit on me. All right, all right, be patient. It says, be careful, our animals can bite. Do not feed your fingers. Of course, I would not want to uh, want them to eat my fingers. I've been bit by a camel. I can only imagine being bit by one of these adorable alpacas would be uh, be just as bad. It's a pigeon coop here. Let's see the pigeons and doves there. Oh, and a lotus up here. They have a mailbox on top. It's marked air mail so the birds can receive uh, air mail here in the uh, in the pigeon coop. Okay, it says a rare Bigfoot sighting in 95 yards. There's some animals you can ride, a little, little yellow donkey there, a little blue train engine, and a little pink carousel. You can see the uh, twirly bird there, another uh, Another kid's ride. As we walk back here, you can see the old neon sign. All right, we made our way to, to Bigfoot. Head this way. Where is Bigfoot? Oh, there he is, Big Bigfoot. Oh, it's just, it's it's just a Bigfoot. It did not say Sasquatch. It said. Uh, said big foot so it's just a big old big old foot there this is the very rare double decker outhouse there you can see in the bottom outhouse is for miners you actually see some feet peeking out there but actually yeah the bottom is for miners and the top is for mine bosses so i guess the bosses climb to the top and then their defecation runs down through here uh, to, to, to the miners. So yeah, definitely, I think in this, in this particular situation, you would definitely want to be a mine boss and not a mine-er. Have a little tiny jail cell here. Yeah, that's, that would not be very pleasant to spend some time in there. There's a little toilet there in the corner. Yeah, it's a little tiny portable portable jail cell. Oh, look at this. It says this is uh, is Mater here. Although it's slightly, slightly uh, terrifying version of Mater there. It looks like he's like gnashing his teeth. Have a musical Ferris wheel here. I love these old school uh, miniature Ferris wheels. Of course, yeah, it's for people under 30 pounds. So yeah, I'm not gonna be able to take a ride in the musical Ferris wheel. But let's see if, uh, let's see if it still runs. Oh, it does. There we go. Technically it's not making music, but that's still, that's still pretty impressive there. Look at the clown go. Oh no, apparently the hole in the rock infested with baby rattlers. And by baby rattlers, I'm, I'm assuming they mean young, just hatched rattlesnakes. But there's only one way to find out. It's open with caution. Oh no, baby rattlers. But instead of being snakes, they're actually rattles that uh, babies would shake to make noise, commonly known as rattlers, because uh, rattlesnakes are often called rattlers as, as well. Figured while we were out here in Moab, might as well enjoy some of the natural beauty. So I've come out here to the Arches National Park, and wow, look at this. 
This is truly a beautiful place. big rock balanced there that's called balanced rock and I actually said that uh, someday that rock will fall they said that the reason it's larger is that the the rock underneath it is softer and erodes faster so at one point one day that rock is gonna come crashing down hope hope no one's standing underneath it I was worried it was gonna come out to arches National Park and not see an arch but uh, there we have it see the trail of people going up to see the arch there the rain's starting to pick up a little bit out here but still completely breathtaking absolutely never seen anything like this all right we broke out the umbrella here I uh, wanted to walk and try to see delicate arch the most famous arch in Utah and it is the rain is coming down a little bit so I got my umbrella to shield me and I think we're gonna go for a little walk all right gotta walk up this pathway here looks a little little perilous a little bit of mud but uh, we should be good yeah this ground here very buddy very slick Whoops. Oh my gosh, I think I definitely underestimated this hike. In the rain, in the mud, and with Crocs on. But there it is, and yes. Uh, that's as close as we can get to it from this, from this direction. But uh, I guess there's a three mile hike that can get you up and actually see the arch. In fact, if you look very carefully, you can see some tiny little humans standing there looking at the arch. They walked, they walked much further than I did, but they got a much better view of, uh, of the arch. Yeah, it's the, that's, that's the arch that you find on the, uh, on the Utah license plate right there. I wish we could get a little closer, but but it was hard enough getting up here. Yeah, can you see it there? You see the uh, the delicate arch. <laughs> and now we uh, try to make it to the bottom without slipping on the mud and wiping out. Oh my gosh! Again, this was this was possibly a bad idea. Possibly should have put on some normal shoes oh my goodness so I actually made it back down off the trail I can't believe how uh, how muddy it was up there I think normally it's a lot drier out in this part of the country I've been I don't know, it seems like rain has been following me around on this uh, on this trip, but uh, I can't I can't believe I didn't slip and fall down. And oh my gosh, look how muddy my crocs are. I may have to may have to find a shoe tree to throw these on sooner rather than later. So I guess I, I want to apologize. I'm sorry I didn't get I, I, I thought there was gonna be a better view of the delicate arch. I, I hiked all the way up to the top of the mountain and uh, and all the way down in mud and just got, you know, a very, very far away glance at the delicate arch. I think, you know, to get it up close and see it, you have to take a real hike 
and um, I would, you know, I'd be up for that. Maybe, I mean, uh, I would have to plan that in advance and maybe do it in better weather. I don't know if I'd want to hike up there in the rain when it's, uh, while it's getting dark, it may be a bad idea, but uh, I don't know, maybe someday we'll get back here and get a little bit of a closer look at uh, Delicate Arch, but thank you so much for joining me today. Had a great, had a great day today here in, uh, in Moab. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country, I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also, uh, also have the uh, enamel pins in uh, the Etsy shop. And uh, I'm also doing Cameo now. So if you want a personalized message from me sent to a friend or family or even sent to yourself, uh, feel free to click on that link in the description of this video. And all that helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this very delicate arch high atop a mountain. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.